Welcome to the DC Now podcast. My name is Rose. And I'm Dina. And uh, we're going to talk about the ERA with Diane. Welcome, Diane. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. Well, it's morning out here in Arizona anyway, so yes, thank you very much. Yes, it's morning somewhere. It's morning somewhere. Yeah. Right. The ERA, of course, stands for the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, which is a constitutional amendment. And what does it say, Diane? What is the text of the Equal Rights Amendment? Well, I didn't bring up the text, but it's 24 words and it says the United States and no other state may, it doesn't say exactly discriminate. See, I didn't even think about that to get the actual wording up, it's so common, may not discriminate uh, under the law on account of sex. And a couple things are important is that it's the United States or any other state. So we're focusing on states. This is not private businesses. This is not in your home. This is not in churches, unfortunately. But anyway, it's not in churches. It's a state, the federal government and the state government. And the other part of it that's important is on account or under the law. So this is about issues under the law. And these complaints about, oh, then, you know, my husband will have to do the dishes 50% of the time. No, well, I wish he would, I wish he would. But yeah, that's not a problem. The law has not got anything to do with how you behave in your house, right? And the third part about it is on account of sex. Okay. It doesn't say men or women, it says sex. Mm -hmm. So on account of sex, using that as a basis of discrimination is prohibited. All right. So would you, would, well, you said that it's only the government. Would, would you want it to be amended to include private businesses? Not at this point. We want to get it passed. It is passed. You know, okay. you, you deal with the private businesses in laws that Congress passes. Mm -hmm. Because the third section of the amendment says Congress may uh, pass any legislation to enforce this. So just like Title VII, we have 14th Amendment that says you can't discriminate on race. But we have Title VII that is a law passed, a federal law passed that says you, and that means everybody, including businesses over 15 people, cannot discriminate on race. So no, you don't put that in the constitution. You put the broad parameter in the constitution and then you make it operational in the law. Wow, so you just answered my question. I was gonna say, what's the point of the ERA if we have Title Seven? but you kind of answered it. Well, there's more point than that. You want okay. to go into that now or are there other issues first? Uh, well, I just want to, I, I, I was remiss. I should have asked you to um, just tell us about yourself a little bit and how long you've been working on this, Diane. <laughs> well, I'm an attorney and I became an attorney in 1980, but I was working on it before 1980 when I lived in Wisconsin and I was working on it there <clears throat> just as an undergraduate student and all of that sort of thing. But I moved to Arizona in 1980 and right away became the chairperson of, the, well, I joined the state task force working on the ERA in 1980. And I thought, you know, I, you, you move to a new place, you got to meet people that are like-minded. So I joined the ERA task force. Well, six months after I joined, the leader ran off with all the money. Yeah, so I became the chair and that, that was the end of that. So on we went from there. So I've been working on it really, you know, seriously, at least since 1940. 1940. No, 40 years since 1980. Okay. Uh, I guess I should say thank you for your service. Um, um, no. Okay. Let's do a, a real high level bird's eye timeline. When did this start? When did it first get introduced? What were the key moments? Well, the Voting Rights Amendment passed in 1920, as you know. We just had the, the celebration of that. Yes. Everyone knew. The women, Alice Paul, who was also a lawyer, knew that that wasn't enough. Just women to vote is not enough. We also have to have an amendment putting us in the Constitution, which became obvious under the Dobbs decision because Alito said women aren't in the constitution, which he's wrong in that we are in the 19th amendment anyway, but he's right in that we were never intended to be in the constitution, just as blacks were never intended to be in the constitution or native Americans were never intended. So the, she knew, Alice Paul knew and her group of women that were working on the, the ERA knew that we had to have the ERA in addition to that. So they started immediately working on it. It was introduced in 1923 into Congress with different wording. The wording was changed over time to mirror 
the 19th and the um, 15th Amendment, because those had already passed. So this wording was changed to mirror that. So it, would, it, it used to say men and women, and that was taken out in favor of sex. And it was made to mirror those other two amendments so there would be no objection to the language. So it was introduced in 23 and nothing happened. Introduced into Congress in 23 and nothing happened. And that was uh, what, Woodrow Wilson? I believe so, I yeah. believe so. Yeah. So then years passed and in, it was Martha Griffiths who was uh, elected from Michigan. And I love this story because I was down in uh, Green Valley, Arizona talking to a group of women and talking about the ERA. And this woman said, I worked in Martha Griffiths office. I can tell you what happened. Yes, so she did. She was working in Martha Griffiths office. She got elected from uh, Michigan. And so as you, you do, you go into an office and you clean out the drawers and the cupboards and, you know, put your own stuff in there. So they found a um, filing folder when people used filing folders in them days. And it had the little tab on the top where you put the subject. And the subject was broads. 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 <laughs> now, Martha Griffiths looks at this and says, no, what, what could this be about? Opens it up. It was the ERA. Oh, that's a fabulous story. You know, I, I hate to sound like an old fart, but, you know, I don't think that the younger women have a true appreciation of how bad it was. Absolutely not. They don't. Culturally. And that is a great story. I mean, this was a congressman's office. Yes. Yeah. And when I tell some of the young women these stories, they, they don't even believe me. And as you probably know, here in Arizona, we did a review of all of our statutes and to be in accord with the ERA. And one of the young attorneys, young woman attorney, found a statute that said married women can sign contracts the same as unmarried women. She phoned me up and she said, why in the world would this even be in the law? And I had to explain to her right. that women were owned by their husbands and were unable to sign contracts. She didn't even know this. She couldn't believe it. So anyway, <clears throat> back to Martha Griffiths. Yeah. <clears throat> so she started and she introduced it. I mean, it was already introduced, but it had to be reintroduced. So she introduced it. She failed the first year, but the second time she introduced it. So it was passed in, um, what, 73, right? Yeah. And so the second uh, session, then she introduced it and it passed out of Congress. And the Article 5 of the Constitution says that to modify the Constitution, to amend the Constitution, these are the procedures you go through. And the one, there are two procedures. One procedure is you pass it out of Congress by two-thirds of Congress. That means House and Senate, which is what she did. And then you send it to the states and three-fourths of them have to ratify. Three-fourths of however many states there are at the time have to ratify. That's the procedure we went through. There is a second procedure, you can call a convention, but that is not the procedure we use. So, so hold, up, hold up one minute. So this is just um, uh, really striking to me how far to the right this country has gone in how many years since 1973? Let me count on my fingers, 40 years, 50 years, 50 years. Um, that two thirds of the House and Senate voted to pass the Equal Rights Amendment. Yes. And that would not happen today. No. It would not. And that's why this is such an important issue to get this done now. And we'll go into why. Okay, Absolutely. so then three fourths of the states. Have to ratify. And this is another story that I heard that when the women came back from Congress after it had passed the, the second house, and so two thirds were passed and it was going out to the States, they told Alice Paul about it. She didn't go down there. I don't know if she was- She was still older. alive in 1973, she yeah. She was still alive, yeah. but she, she sat at her desk and cried. And they said, why are you crying? And she said, because of the time limit. They put the time limit on there to kill it and that's what they're going to do. So she was heartbroken. And of course, that is what's in our way today. Still, from 1973, 50 years on, that is still in our way. It is not a block, but it is an obstacle. 
but I thought we got three quarters. Okay, so there was a lot going on in the 70s. I remember my mother was going to now meetings at the time, and this was the big issue, and they couldn't get three quarters of the states. States left. Correct. Virginia. Nevada, Illinois. Okay, and they passed Correct. them during the Trump administration. Right. Then well, what happened? then what happened is, as I told you, I'm a lawyer and I talked to the other lawyers, it's in effect because we have met the constitutional requirement. So it is part of the Constitution, Amendment 28. The problem is, of course, how to make it effective in reality. Talk when about people, what Trump did with uh, Bill Barr and how he directed him. Okay, so after it passes, a law was passed much later in time, of course, creating the National Archivist, who is the person who keeps track of all of our laws and who publishes new laws, etc. And so that came, I don't know when that law came into effect, but so he should have, as he has in the past, go ahead and publish the law. He did not do it. Why did he not do it? Because Trump ordered Bill Barr to send a memo to him saying that the ERA was not valid and he was not the publisher. Prior to that time, the memo that the archivist had was from Jimmy Carter administration when he was president and it was totally pro ERA. So he said, throw that memo out, it's bad law, put this memo in from us and you cannot publish it. Now, lawyers that have looked at that memo are simply aghast at how stupid it is because it's legally, it's just ridiculous. But that stopped the archivist from publishing it. <clears throat> so he didn't do it because of that. Now, the other argument is it's not required to be published by the archivist. The constitution does not require that. There wasn't even an archivist when the, this uh, the amendment was passed in the constitution. So we say that that is not valid at all, but lawsuits have been filed. So law, well, there was one filed in Massachusetts. Yeah, that, that didn't go anywhere. But then there was the one that is of importance that is coming up on September 28th is, as you mentioned, the three states that passed it making 38 states, was Nevada first, and then Illinois, and then Virginia. So that made the 38 states, which says, okay, we've done it now, it's in. Well, naturally, lawsuits immediately arose. So the uh, because the archivist wouldn't publish it, those three states, the attorney generals of those three states, filed a lawsuit against the archivist in the Washington circuit and said, publish it. Naturally, the government responded, which at that time was Trump, and said, don't publish it, you should not. And then five states also responded, asking to intervene, saying, well, we haven't ratified it and we don't think it should be um, put into the constitution, so don't do it because of the timeline. So that's the lawsuit that is-, what is the, Okay, hold on. Did you explain the timeline? No. Okay. For the, first of all, you know, nobody knows any of this except a very few women who have been working on this for all these years. So the general public has no idea why this hasn't been in the newspapers and in the media that this outrageous uh, circumvention of the of government process has happened and of, of democracy um, is a mystery to me. Um, can you just talk about the timeline and what, yes. is, what is that? Well, the timeline that was put into effect back in 1973 was for seven years. And that, yeah, most, most of the amendments that have been passed do not have a timeline. A few amendments do. And the timeline is seven years on these few amendments. It's not every one, it's just just a few, I think seven of them or something like that. It started with the, um, what's the drinking one? Prohibition. It started with prohibition and that wasn't until the 1930s. So prior to that, none of the amendments had a timeline. So it started in 1930 with prohibition. And I'm, I got a 
talk about the 27th Amendment too, but um, they put a seven year timeline on it because they wanted it to fail. And they thought that it would never pass in seven years. So that was a way to make sure that it failed. But instead it passed in about, <laughs> about a year and a half. So they, in order to undo that, they had to pass the other one, I think it's the 20th, to, to throw it out, right? Because once an amendment is passed, the only way you throw it out is to pass an amendment throwing it out. So they did that a few years later, but that's What's when they that, started. Wait, what do you mean by that? I'm confused. When an amendment is passed, it's done. Right. If you don't like, you change your mind, you don't like it, <clears throat> you have to pass another amendment to throw it out. Right. You don't just, it's not like a law right. that you can go to court and have the judge declare it's bad and throw it out. No, 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 no can do. You need another constitutional amendment. Correct, correct. So what was the one that was passed to, to counter ERA? None, none has been passed none. to counter ERA. Okay. None. okay, no. Just getting so, clarity. Okay, so the timeline started in, in with, the, with the prohibition amendment. And it's not on every one since then, it's on some. It was not on the 19th Amendment, for example, the one women's right to vote. There was no timeline on that. So the timeline was put on, the seven years passed, and it, it, as you said, many things were happening in the 70s and the ERA rolled right along, getting ratification. But then the Koch brothers, yes, the very same Koch brothers, funded a stop ERA movement with Phyllis Schlafly. Remember that? They so, were behind Phyllis Schlafly. I did not know that. I just found out who was behind Phyllis Schlafly, that it was the Koch brothers. Okay. And for those youngins out there who don't know who Phyllis Schlafly was. Look it up. <laughs> she, she was a big, uh, big media sensation because she was a woman. About it. So a lot of younger people do know about her. There was a movie oh, they? in America. And it was about the, it wasn't about the ERA, but it was about the, the um, Gloria Steinem and, and it did yes. talk about ERA and things like that. So I do think a lot of younger people through that TV series know about her. Well, for those who don't, um, if you missed it, she got a lot of attention for coming out against women's rights and um, about promoting being uh, especially subservient to your husband. That and was she and yeah. she was a lawyer traveling around the country, not minding her own children, telling other women they should go home, obey right. their husbands <laughs> and mind their children. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it didn't get the required number of states in the seven years. So three more years were added, making it 10 years. <clears throat> it still did not get the required number of states in that time. So this is the argument of many of the opponents is it's dead because you didn't meet the timeline. The reason that is false is that the timeline was in the preface of the amendment. It was not in the amendment. Some of the amendments that had timelines put the preface, uh, sorry, put the timeline in the amendment. Some put it in the preface. Every attorney knows the preface to a law is not law. Okay. It is an explanation of what the law is about. For example, because we have a climate change problem and this and that is going to happen, we pass this following law to help fix it. And then you cite the law. What is before that, the preface, is not the law. It is legislative history, not law. So when the states voted on the ERA to ratify it, they did not vote on that preface. They voted only on the language in the law, which is the three clauses, the one I told you, the one that says um, that Congress can pass laws to affect it, and the third section says it goes into effect two years from the time of passage. Okay, so let's back up a minute again. Why would the Koch brothers want to deny women's equality, do you think? Equal pay? It would that is the money? The hugest big, it's always about money. That's all it's ever about is money. Exactly. So it's about equal pay. And it's about what if you had to pay for health care equally for women, then your cost of your company, if you're providing insurance would go up, you know, on what if you had to pay death benefits 
the same for women. I mean, it, it just goes on and on. It's all about money and power. That's all it's about is money and power. So once again, the capitalist system is enforcing inequality. Oh yeah. So the timeline issue, as I said, the opponents are saying that is that throws it out, which it does not because it's not in the law. Secondly, one of the courts argued that, well, you know, that was passed 50 years ago and we don't know if it's still an issue today. Is well, that where right? have you been? Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, where have you been? Obviously. Well, I think, I think the abortion issue um, is pretty right. much highlighting that for everybody. And Exactly. Yeah, and so, it's interesting that the wording of the amendment is the United States and the states. It's very critical right now. Yes. And yes. this could be a big weapon in the fight for reproductive freedom. Yes. So the other argument against this timeline issue is the 27th Amendment. <clears throat> the 27th Amendment is the one that says sitting legislators cannot raise their salaries while they're sitting in the seat. If they pass a salary increase, it cannot go into effect until after the next election when that person who's sitting there and voted for it may not be the one sitting in the seat. I don't remember hearing about that in the press at all. You didn't. You didn't. You didn't hear anything about it. That passed in the, in the 80s, I think, or 90s. Maybe it passed. No, no, it was later than that. Uh, when, when do you think that amendment, I mean, it makes sense, I, I'm for it, I, I agree, you shouldn't be able to raise your own salary, right? But that amendment was introduced into the Congress in 1798. <laughs> yeah, pretty funny. It was passed 202 years later, so it was passed in, what, 2000. Okay. <laughs> and so when these opponents say, well, this is too old, you know. Oh, you, this you, is brilliant. I love yeah. it. This is perfect. Yeah. We, we, yeah. we don't know if this is still an issue today, you know. <laughs> it's been too long. Here's an amendment you put in that's 200 years old. Do not oh, tell yeah. me that because of a 10-year timeline, our amendment is no longer needed. Why have I heard that there's a timeline that ends at the end of this year? Is that wrong? That I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, okay. The other timeline I mentioned, it goes into effect two years after it was last passed, which was Virginia, January 27, 2020. So I it see. went into effect January 27, 2022, and we had national celebrations all around, which not one media covered. Not one media outlet covered it. Right. Of course not. The other, it, the this other. Is, this right. makes me beyond angry. I yeah. mean, really, it, it just, it, it's, I, I should be grateful in a way because it's reinvigorating my passion for women's rights that Good. This is in the state that it is. Well, the other strategy on this is getting state ERAs passed to show that it is still an issue. So Nevada has a state ERA on their ballot, which should, it's passed twice through their legislature. It should pass on their ballot. Minnesota has one that's going on the ballot. So other places are, you know, we, we are moving towards, we, we've introduced it twice here in Arizona to get state ERAs to, so you don't have the argument of this is not an issue. Obviously it's still an issue. But we have, um, under Obama's tenure, the, the Lilly Ledbetter Equal Pay Act, right? Yes. And um, why? what has happened with that? Has that been enforced? Let me explain. What, that's another argument. Well, you got laws. You got Title VII. You got pregnancy discrimination. You got Lilly Ledbetter. What's the problem? You don't have any problem. Well, <clears throat> I see. How are laws interpreted? T two things. Laws can be revoked. Right. By Congress. Easily. Right. Look how many years it took them to redo the uh, VAWA Act. I think it was four or five years until we finally. The what? Which one? VAWA. Oh, Violence Against, against women. women. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You have to make sure everybody understands. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, 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 you know, know all these acronyms, of course, because I've been doing this for years, but yeah, yes, the Violence Against Women Act, it was four or five years before they, uh, they, they didn't pass it until they put it back in again. And, and the, look, look at the assault rifle ban. We had an assault rifle ban. Yes, we did. And they took that out. So laws can be taken out. There's one problem. A constitutional amendment you can only take out. How? Another constitutional amendment. Which requires so two thirds of the Congress and then three fourths of the states. Correct. The second thing is, and this is the important thing. I know it's important for attorneys. It's probably not so important for the rest of you, but you need to understand why it is important. That is the level of analysis under the law. When judges get a case involving a constitutional right, they have three levels of analysis to look at. Rational relation, which simply means, did the legislators have any possible relationship between what they were thinking and what they did when they passed this law? If they did, it's okay. You can understand that women, when we had, women had rational relation for hundreds of years, we lost all those cases, right? Because there's always a reason why you should not allow women to do something, right? I remember being in high school and we told we couldn't play um, full, full court basketball because our uteruses would fall out. <laughs> yep, we were told that. All right. So the second level of analysis is- the experts, those experts. Yeah, yeah, those experts told us. <laughs> the second level of analysis is the, it's just ran out of my mind. Uh, it's not strict scrutiny, it's intermediate, intermediate scrutiny. Intermediate is only at this time for women. And it didn't happen until the 60s. And what intermediate scrutiny means is that you have to have more than just any old reason to pass a law. It has to make sense and it has to be true and it has to have some relationship to the actual goal you intend to achieve. And I can give you an example there was a law in Illinois that women could not tend bar behind the bar. They could be waitresses in the bar, but they could not tend bar behind the bar unless their husband or their father owned the bar. When that went to court, it was challenged. When it went to court, the, the legislator said, well, the reason we passed it is to protect women from, you know, drunken men groping them and this and that. Who is more likely to be groped by drunken men? The waitresses out on the floor delivering the drinks or the woman behind that long wooden bar serving the drinks to the waitresses? Exactly. We all know the answer to that. And why would you not want women to be bartenders? Because they make more money. We all know the answer to that. Yeah. And because the men want the women coming to their tables, delivering the drinks so they can harass them. So the legislator said they were protecting women because if a person tried to you know, abuse a woman or grab her or whatever, he knew that he would get a sock in the face from the husband or the father. Isn't that nice? Like Are you, that it, it's, it's just <laughs> unbelievable. So of course the law was okay. So immediate scrutiny was a case about insurance, car insurance, where they're charging boys more than girls. Now, Interestingly enough, many of the cases where we win, it boys brought them because it discriminated against them. Men are more likely to win these cases than women are. I've done a study on it. So the boys were objecting because their car insurance costs more than girls' car insurance, or teenagers. So what the court, well, with intermediate scrutiny, you have to find out, is this really true or is this a stereotype? So the court made them go and do a study. Is it true? that boys are more dangerous drivers than girls. And they found out it was not true. And so they said, well, can't do it because the, the law you make has to be real. It yeah. can't be based on stereotypes. Well, so it seems that to me that a lot of the laws that are being proposed by the right wing these days are fantasy based. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's the middle level. That's the middle level of scrutiny. The highest level of scrutiny is called strict scrutiny. And that means the complete opposite of that low level, which is when what the government- the I'm sorry, Diane, what, we have strict, intermediate, and what's the third one? The, the lowest level was the one I spoke of first, rational relation. 
rational relation. That's the lowest level. Any idea, any crazy idea that you can come up with that you think ties this to that. Okay. Then the middle level is you got, it's got to be accurate. It, it, it's got to be not based on stereotypes, got to be based on reality, blah, blah. The highest level strict scrutiny says if the government passes a law and it discriminates against certain named groups, the government has a very high bar to jump to prove why do you have to have this law? Why does it have to be this way? Why does it have to harm these particular people? Can't you do it in some other way without harming these particular people or figure out something else? Now the protected groups are the ones named in the constitution. Okay. Based on nationality or alienage, based on race and color and religion. Okay. The ERA puts women in that protected group. Right. So I always say to the guys, you want to protect women? Make them a protected class. Exactly. Then we will get the highest level of scrutiny in our discrimination claims. That is what is so important about the ERA. Okay. That we don't have this. And there are institutionally right. protect women. And some of these countries, I mean, this includes Latvia and Luxembourg. Okay. I'm going to read them. Belgium, Canada, Denmark, France, Greece, Iceland, Ireland, Latvia, Luxembourg, Portugal, Spain, and Sweden. And now Chile is just um, introduced it. It hasn't passed. And it's, it's being considered the most radical constitution ever uh, because it um, gives women equal rights. It's the first, uh, I believe it's the first part of it. So well, go ahead. It's, it's, it seems to me, yes, it's about money, but it's about something else fundamental around the world. Patriarchy. Patriarchy. Exactly. Yes. Now, I worked 18 years in abroad, you know, and many of the former Soviet Union countries where we, the American Bar Association, the United States, put lawyers to help them redraft their constitutions, insisted that women's equality be in the constitution. We did that to Germany after World War II and we did it to Japan. We haven't done it ourselves. Why we, am I not seeing- Other countries do it. Why am I not seeing that in the list? I don't know, you got some wrong list. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I mean, uh, just to defend the United States, isn't it a lot more difficult to amend the constitution in the United States? Because I, I understand it is that, you know, it's sort of like state constitutions where like, if you look at the California constitution, it's very long, like they put in, they legislate through the constitution, whereas in yeah. the United States, it seems we rely on statutory laws for things, you That's know, like rights That's acts and things like that, whereas the Civil Rights Act should have been codified in the constitution also. Well, you're right, it is difficult to amend the U.S. Constitution, and there's pros and cons to that, obviously, as, as you brought out, but some of uh, the, the fact that we have insisted these go into other countries' constitutions and won't put it in our own tells us something. It's just like we haven't signed CEDA. Yeah. We've never signed the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. And we are one of two countries in the world who have not signed it. What's the other one, Iran? Yes, I believe it is Iran yes. or North Korea. Good lucky guess. Um, what, um, so what is stopping President Biden from getting this done? I mean, what's the levers that need to be pushed? What should we be doing now? Well, there, there's several things going on. One is a, a starting tomorrow when Congress goes back into session. One of the things is to flood Biden with the messages of tell the archivist to publish right. this. Now, the archivist is an executive employee. He's not an employee of the executive, but he's it's an a, executive. It's a woman now. Actually. It's a woman now. She's interim acting, yes. Okay. Um, the problem with that is the lawsuit. Okay. Because there's a pending lawsuit that I told you about in loss, our side lost at the at the district court. It's on appeal, and the argument, oral argument, is going to be the 28th of September. Do it, but when there's a pending lawsuit, I don't think and, he's going to do it. Okay, so this you know lawsuit I mean? refers to the timeline. This one, since they became Republican, so now it's two attorneys general, Nevada and Illinois, telling the archivist publish the ERA because 38 states have ratified it. We're the last two states, and we say right. ratify it. So that it's, doesn't talk about the, well, it does talk about the timeline, but the point is it's done, ratify it. So as I said, we lost at the district court. Now and it's on a lost in DC district court. 
Yes. And what was the what was the basis for that? The timeline. Okay. So okay. the other things that are happening right now, there, there's there's several. The House has more than once passed a resolution saying, yay, uh, well, first passed a resolution saying the timeline is not valid, forget the timeline, no timeline, never was one. The House has passed that twice. It's over at the Senate now, and the Senate needs to pass it. It's H.J. Res 17, so House Joint Resolution 17. It's in the Senate. It was passed by the House. It doesn't need to go through committee. All it needs to do is go on the floor and pass the damn thing. It doesn't end the problem, but it takes away one of the arguments. Which is the takes, timeline. Right. It takes away one of the opponent's arguments. Okay. Because only Congress can regulate this. If, if you look at the amendment, it has no place for executive. There's no input from the executive in the amending of a constitution. Right. It's just Congress and the state. So that's one thing to do. The second thing to do is the Senate, res joint re or Senate resolution one, which has been introduced before and not been passed, is the same thing, saying the same thing. There's no timeline, throw it out, forget about it. Now that still has to go through committee hearing in the, in the judiciary. So that would be a longer process. So it'd be better just to pass the House. Okay. But there's a movement is to tell your senators, tell your, tell your senators to vote on and pass one or both of these. The third thing that's going on is House Joint Resolution 891. That is a resolution that says, yay, the ERA is passed. Hallelujah. Welcome, women. That is not unusual. They don't have to do that for it to be valid. It's been done before when other amendments passed and they said, yay, the amendment's done. Hallelujah. So it's not, I wouldn't say common, but it has been done before just to verify that we Congress believe it's a done deal. So that is House Resolution 891, and it has, I think, 255 sponsors, and they're looking for 281 or something like that. So they're trying to get a few more sponsors before they run with that. So that's the second item, is to contact your congressperson. And if they're not already a sponsor of House Resolution 891, to get on it. So those are the two actions going on right now. And then Biden also to have the archivist publish the ERA. Biden, the Senate, and the House. Yes, all three. Biden, and you, the Senate, and so there's three things. Yes. And you can listen in to the hearing on the 28th. It'll be, it'll be, uh, the, the sound audio will be live streamed. The or, appeals court. Okay. And how would you, um, how would you find? I don't that? know. I haven't actually got the link myself. So but the somebody, appeals court in, in Washington? In Washington, D.C. Court of Appeals, Washington, D.C. Okay. Yes. So you could go down there and listen to okay, it. Okay, <laughs> maybe I will. Um, and then, so really the deadline we're looking at is the midterm elections because anything can happen. Anything can happen. But we're not going to stop fighting. The ERA is in, it's done. Making it effective is what we're working on now. Okay. And, and on that line, several states have done what Arizona already did, which is, are starting to do. Uh, we already did it, looked at all of our laws and said what needed to be changed to comply with the ERA. The reason they give a two-year timeline, you know, you pass an amendment and you say it goes into effect two years, is precisely for that reason, to give states the time to modify their laws to comply with the new constitutional amendment. Now, nobody did it, but Arizona did it. We did it ourselves. Uh, so now there are about seven states that are working on it. Um, California's passed a resolution, Illinois, North Carolina, Virginia, no, not Virginia. Um, uh, you I know, forget, but there's I, about I, I seven of them. As, a, as an observer, yeah. I wouldn't have guessed Arizona would have been the state to do that, but I'm wondering if you had something of to course. do with that. Of course, that's why it got done. <laughs> that's why it got done. We have a very strong ERA group. We have such a terrible legislature that we can't get anything through. So well, this just shows you what a committed group of, of people can do. Yep. People have it in their heads that you, you know, if I, whenever anybody says the absurd statement, you can't fight City Hall, I always say, don't be ridiculous. I've done it many times and won. And won. Of course you can. Yes. Of course you can. And look what you've done in Arizona. You've I know. Them to comply with the Equal Rights Amendment. No, no, no. We wrote it. It hasn't been passed yet. I see. It's 651 pages long. Okay. And it requires a lot of changes in the law. And so it's done, but it's not been passed. So you've given them the roadmap. Yeah, we haven't even ratified the ERA yet. They're sure in the heck not going to yeah. pass these laws to comply okay. when they haven't even ratified okay. it. We're still trying okay. to get them to ratify okay. it. I get it now. All right. 
Um, Rose, do you have anything else? Um, I think you kind of answered it already, but the, the, about the Title VII, you were going to talk about it, or did you talk about it already kind of inadvertently? Well, that is what I talked about earlier with the, you know, Title VII, Lily Ledbetter, all of that, pregnancy. Yeah. They all can be reversed, and how you interpret them uh -huh. is important, whether it's that rational basis, intermediate scrutiny, or strict scrutiny. Because remember that Gedulding case, you probably don't, but came out in the 70s that said discrimination against pregnant women is not discrimination against women. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because one class is pregnant women and the other class is men and women who aren't pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> so what, you know, I was in law school when this came out, I think it was 76 or 77, and we argued about it. We fought like hell in our law school class. And we argued about it and I said, what biology class did these, prof these <laughs> judges not go to? I mean, this is insanity, but they followed that same logic so in other cases. So well, the of the outcome of this see, appeals is a case. Choice. The, the idea that pregnancy is a choice, I mean, unless you're assaulted, it's a choice and therefore it's not a fundamental part of being female, which that's a problem. I, I could see the people interpreting it that way. That is a huge problem. Yeah. But also another problem I see, and this is related, is I don't I didn't read it, but apparently someone told me this. It says that in one of the opinions that overthrew Roe v. Wade, they said that historically women have been second class citizens, and they used that as a reason for why. I, I don't know if maybe this is this is too crazy for it to be true, but that's a reason why abortion is not a right. That's correct. That is absolutely and, correct, and, and that's why it's so important to put it in the Constitution because that yes. can be an excuse. Yes, because yeah. women were not, and he said, women were never in the Constitution, and they were not meant to be covered by its protections. And he's right about there that, except for the ERA, they didn't count that. But I want to go back to your thing about pregnancy as a choice. So is sports. Men playing sports after work, baseball, basketball, whatever, is a choice. They get injured, and they get disability, and they get covered. My understanding is pregnancy is considered a disability more so than a right in terms of sex, right? No, I don't think so. Because is the Pregnancy Act, it's a protection like uh, in terms of disability rather than it's a right for women? Correct, but it has to be something beyond a normal pregnancy. Mm, okay. You know, something beyond the normal pregnancy. But sports is a choice too, and men don't ever get docked for the fact that they go out and break their legs or their necks or whatever they do. Okay, so <clears throat> if I understand this, um, even if we lose at the appeals court on September 28th, we still can get this done through the Congress. Well, there's through two schools of thought about that. If we lose, do we want to go to this Supreme Court? No. I don't think so, because I'm pretty sure I know what they're going to say. Yeah. So then what do you have left is that Congress says there is no timeline. This was all nonsense from the beginning, and it, it is passed. And then another lawsuit will have to be filed. And it'll have to be someone asserting their rights under the existing ERA. And then it'll be another lawsuit going up. So this could get tied up in the courts. Um, is, there, is there something Biden can do like a, I mean, it's ridiculous. You couldn't do an executive order because it's a constitutional amendment. He has no input. But what could he, um, you know, he, him pressuring the archivist when there's a lawsuit, that's probably a dead end, sounds like. You use the bully puppet. The bully he, puppet, yeah. He has a bully puppet. As you mentioned, this isn't out in the news. Nobody knows what's going on. No, women do not. Nobody knows about this. Um, I he assume put it, it was in the passed. news. Yeah. We need to get this public and we need people to stand up. Um, all kinds of people from all walks of life. Uh, celebrities, <laughs> you know, good luck with that. A lot of those are going retrograde too these days it seems um but but politicians celebrities all kinds of people need to stand up and say era now yes it needs to be in the public consciousness yeah 
I agree. While we're working on the midterms, this needs to go hand in hand. Well, yeah, all of our, we have a PAC and that's one of the questions you have to 100% support the ERA or you're not endorsed by our PAC. Okay. What can, what can women and, um, do to help with this issue? Well, there's an ERA coalition and they put out a call to action. Um, I think you were on it from uh, Dina, weren't you? Or maybe yes. not. Yeah, okay. So they put out a call to action like next week because Congress goes back in uh, starting on Tuesday, tomorrow. And so there's a call to action to, to do the things we talked about, contacting Biden, contacting the Senate to vote on those two resolutions and contacting your own House representative to make sure they sign on 891. So those are the things. And then to educate in your own community. Get a state ERA if you don't have one. 24 states have a state ERA, but 26 don't. So get it, start working on a state ERA. If your state has not ratified, and there are 12 that have not, um, make sure you've got a real active ERA task force. I mean, Arizona does, Utah does, uh, some of the states do, North Carolina does, well, they've already ratified, but um, some of the states have, other states don't have one at all. Mississippi doesn't even have one. Mississippi yeah. needs an ERA task force. Among other things, yeah. Among other things, like water for like water, yeah. yes. Yeah, like water, that would be infrastructure. That would be a good thing to have. Yes, okay. Well, this has been a fabulous educational opportunity. Um, I want to thank you so much on behalf of DC Now. Well, thank you very much for having me and listening to me rant for an hour. <laughs> well, it's been our pleasure. And Rose, maybe we it, can it get was Diane a back. Lecture. It wasn't a rant. <laughs> maybe we can get Diane back again as things progress. Yes, absolutely. If she's willing. <laughs> Would you come back, Diane? Sure. Okay. Well, thank you. You got me all fired up and we, we know what we have to do. Okay. All right. Thank you again. Thank you very much. And okay. thank you everyone for listening.